Well, Queenslanders on Saturday just gave Labor a massive wake-up call and a massive scare too. State and federal, they don't want to be poorer, these Queenslanders have said, and they don't want to feel unsafe as well. And on Saturday, voters in Queensland turned against the state Labor government in two by-elections in two supposedly Labor-safe seats. Uh, gigantic swings, 90% against Labor in the seat that used to be held by Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk, which Labor still managed to hold on to, and an 18% swing in Ipswich West, which it lost, shocking the new Premier, Stephen Miles. I was expecting a bad result, and they're even worse than that. Clearly, they wanted to send us a message that we need to work harder, particularly on cost of living and on community safety. Joining me is the panel, Michael Kroger, former Victorian Liberal President, and Steve Conroy, former Labor Senator and Cabinet Minister. What does this mean, this result, Michael, uh, for the state Labor government, the Queensland government, but also the, the federal Labor government? Well, the Queensland Labor government's a goner. They're um, going for fourth term, very hard. But uh, the coalition needs to win a Liberal Party 12 seats, I think a bit over 5%, swing 5.5%, which they're going to get. Uh, this bloke's a hopeless Premier. Uh, he's got a PhD, did you know, Andrew? In? in, in, in trade unionism. <laughs> yeah, well, it could have been women's studies, so, but anyway. Well, well, so this bloke's out of his depth. Christopher foolley has been very good. Christopher Foley's talking about things people are interested in, like youth crime, which is out of control. So this government's going to get kicked out. Christopher Foley's going to win, uh, I think, in October. No federal uh, implications? Federal implications, oh, definitely. I wonder whether Queensland has said to the Labor Party federally, we have reached peak woke in this state. Enough. Enough of this nonsense. Can you get on to things like youth crime? Can you get on to things like cost of living in Queensland? Uh, I think they've had enough. So the two green seats, which they won from the Liberal Party at the last election, are at risk. And a few other Labor seats are at risk. Blair, etc. I think, is at risk. So they're not going to win any in Queensland. And uh, it's going to Although, help drive Labor into a minority government. Well, too. peak woke. I'm not quite sure the Queensland government has been peak woke itself. But anyway, what do you make of that? No, look, I think it was, you know, if we're being frank, a very disappointing weekend for Labor. I think it does send very loud alarm bells ringing in the Queensland branch. But I, I, I think Michael, who's always been very much correct in his analysis, going for a fourth term is very, very hard. So to those who want to say suddenly the issue that's caused this, these results were all this youth crime, let me be clear. The last two elections, the Liberals have tried to turn youth crime into an issue. It didn't work then. No, it's but the not Premier the issue himself, now. the Premier himself well, that's said he, this is going to have to focus on Yes, that. And, and he should. Yeah. But in terms of has it moved the dial for two previous elections? No. Is it something oh, that should I be dealt with? Bit, so look, you Labor can't Party, deny he hasn't Labor done Party very well. won seats, OK, in the face of the alleged mm. crime epidemic. But my point fundamentally is this is a bad weekend, a disappointing weekend for Labor. Federally? Federally, I think Michael's, again, fair analysis. I think at least one of those two seats, Ryan, if I was the Greens, I'd be very nervous about Ryan. Uh, but in terms of we've only got five seats, uh, it's it's pretty hard to do much worse than that. We have been one and two in the past. Yeah. I accept that. But the... Except the cost of living, of course, is a national yeah. focus. And this seems to be the big takeout but, but a point, yeah, a from point both in, sides. But at a point in time, 12 months' time, cost of living will not be bearing as heavily as it is today, as Dunkley We shall showed. see. Mm. Yes, but we shall see about that. There's another state election, uh, Michael, uh, in Tasmania. Um, that's uh, with Liberal Premier Jeremy Rockliffe is called an early election there later for this year. What do you... Uh, oh, sorry, later for this year. It's on mm. Saturday. What do you expect there? Well, he's going for a fourth term. So he's not going to win a majority in his own right. Uh, it's going to be a hung parliament. I expect he will cobble together a government with the independents and Lambie. And the reason I think he'll be able to do that, not Labor, is for Labor to win, they need to have an agreement with the Greens. They need to be in coalition with the Greens to win, to be in government. No Labor government now can ever get into bed with these anti-Semitic elements in the Greens party, as evidenced by the woman, Jennifer, Jenny Leong, who made those disgusting anti-Jewish comments the race baiting of the Greens, their their involvement in anything which is anti-Jewish in, in recent months, 
uh, some of the comments there people have made. No Labor government can be formed in coalition with the Greens. And that's why in Tasmania, Labor probably can't be in government because they cannot formally have an arrangement with the Greens. Well, uh, Jenny, uh, she did apologise for that, oh, Jenny yeah, Leung, yeah, and said you know, <laughs> the comments were something about tentacles of Jews yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. spreading Apologies. elsewhere, and she didn't mean... She blah, still blah, believes blah, them, blah. probably. Yeah. But anyway, do you, how, do, you, do you see that? that no, I think... To, the, 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 the Labor's going to be hurt by any relationship with the Greens? Well, I think the Tasmanian Labor Party learnt a long time ago when they did have a coalition with the Greens that they'd never do it again. And if you talk to any of the colleagues down there, it's we are never forming a coalition with them. They may vote for us to keep us in government in a, in a mm. if it was just the two, uh, but Labor won't ever form a coalition, just like I doubt they would form a, a formal coalition in any way, shape or form in Canberra. So I think Michael's point's right. Fourth-term government, going for it. Mm. And to, but I, I'll give Rockliffe credit. He couldn't. He wasn't. He was sick of being blackmailed by rogues who quit the party. They said, "I've had I, enough. I, absolutely. I've had enough, uh, uh, and I'm calling it another example of people getting elected to parliament, yeah. whether they're on the Labor ticket or the Liberal ticket. And once they're in, they think no, no, they're a bit so bigger." I, than I, the, I give him credit, and it may cost him majority governments, but it is better to be in a minority government than being blackmailed by your lunatics Correct. from your own party. Correct. 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 Can I just stick with you for a sec, Paul Keating? Right. I know you're a China hawk. Um, We've got China's Foreign Minister, Wang Yi, coming to Australia this, this week. He's invited Paul Keating to come and meet him probably on Thursday, knowing that Paul Keating is a pro-China shill, I'll say that, uh, very aggressively pro-China, very anti the, uh, the Albanese government, claiming it's too soft on China. Mate, is that appropriate for, our, for Keating well, to go well, there? Is he already accepting the invitation? There's, there's lots of politicians who come here on official business from different parliaments around the mm. world to catch up with people. So is it some sort of outrageous uh, thing that happens? No. In general, in this issue, what it again demonstrates is China want to play and interfere in Australian politics. That's the point. That's, that's the that's point. What they want doing. to make him a catch and if, ball. And if Paul Keating is dumb enough he is. to go to a meeting and then continue to spout their propaganda, well, we'll all be able to easily judge him. So you're saying, don't go, what are you making? Of course he shouldn't go. I mean, he's being used. He's being he's used by a hostile used. communist dictatorship to divide and dominate the Labor government and, by extension, the country. I mean, how could a former Prime Minister conduct his own independent foreign policy? The only good news out of this is that the Liberals are not the only party these days where rogue... We're former prime ministers on our side have gone rogue. Uh, the, oh my God! Uh, don't compare the list because I think the Liberal list uh, is much longer. <laughs> oh, the, Malcolm Fraser. Uh, it must be the Malcolm uh, name. Uh, it's true. It must be true one. It must be uh, something about the Malcolm name. Exactly, indeed. Uh, Steve Conroy and, and Michael Kroger, thank you both so much for Thanks, your time. Adam.